coming back to the heart of worship when it's all about you it's all about you i'm sorry
stand with us this morning if you would just stand with us and worship God is already in this place there's not much more we've got to do other than to tap in Father we thank you for your presence in this place that you come every time that you always turn up Father and we as your children this morning we choose to worship you in spirit and in truth so be exalted in this place Father come and touch lives Come and heal the broken, Father. Come and heal the sick. In your presence there is fullness, Father. Fullness of joy, fullness of freedom. So we receive that now, Father. Come and have your way in us. This is your house. This is your church. Come and have your way, Father. Because it's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. So when the music fades and all stripped away
as we sang that now there's somebody right here that's facing an overwhelming battle something so big that you cannot do it in your own strength and you've been summing up this giant looking at it from every angle not knowing which way to turn or how you would overcome this obstacle but God says this morning don't be shaken do not be moved I go before you I'm all around you right now Defeating giants is my business, says the Lord. Just let it go now. Leave it at my feet. I am the giant slayer. I am the way maker. I am the healer. I am the provider. I am all that you need right now, says the Lord. So I don't know who you are this morning, but take heart. Take heart. God is with you. God is with you. We will not be shaken. We will not. Oh no, no. Our God is fighting for us. Oh, and He's in control. Yes, He is. He's in control. We will not be shaken. I left you up. You 
Lift him up with our voice this morning. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's Jesus. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you. same God that rescued my people from the from Egypt I'm the same God that rescues you I'm the same God that covers you no matter what storm is around you just like Peter looked at the storm after he walked on the water with Christ and he sank and he called out Jesus and there he was in an instant pull him up and the beautiful thing is when you call out to him you continue to walk on the water with him you don't have to fear you can sit at his feet just seek I 
shaped you. I set your path out before you. You are not alone. Do not be afraid of the terrors of night, for you are not alone. And as Elijah asked Gehazi, open his eyes. So I am opening your eyes to show you that the battle is not yours. So I am showing you that my angel armies have gone before you. My angel armies have overcome. So all you need to do is look up. Look up into my face. Lift your head, my child. Lift your head up, up to where I am. For as you lift your head up, so you shall see. So you shall see the enemy has been defeated. The giant you are facing has been defeated. But you must know who you are and you are my child. And because you are my child, you are more than a conqueror. For every situation you face, you have overcome. For I shaped you and I formed you. You are walking on the water, but you are not walking on the water alone. You are standing in a storm, but you are not standing in a storm alone. You are standing in the night, but you are not standing in the night alone. You are walking in the desert, but you are not walking alone. For I am there right beside you. I am there carrying you. I am there wrapping my arms around you, saying, My child, listen to my heartbeat. My child, listen to my voice. And though you only see one set of footprints, that is me, I am carrying you. I am carrying you through this storm. I am carrying you over the bodies of your enemies. For the enemy has been defeated. When my son rose from that grave, the enemy was defeated. Not even death could hold me back. So why, why do you doubt that I cannot overtake the situation? For your giant has been slain, but look up to me. Listen to my voice, listen to my heart, and look in my face. For my child, I love you. I love you more than you ever knew. knew. And that is why I shaped you. That is why I placed you on this earth, because I love you. This world needed you, and that is why you are here.
Good morning, good morning. Nice to meet some new faces. Welcome, welcome. And to all the rest of you, I hope that we all had a blessed week this week. Uh, I had something else planned. Um, I actually planned two, two things to speak about this morning. Uh, but earlier this morning, I think uh, the Lord just laid it upon me to go with the one about the other, and I think the worship uh, solidified that. So what I wanted to uh, move on about was just a little bit deeper what uh, Nathaniel spoke last week about David and rescuing the people that was taken from Ziglag. And when, when they left, uh, there was 600 men with him going after the people that raided Ziglag and burned it down. 200 of those 600 were weary and stayed behind. And they caught up and rescued over and above what was taken because the, the, the raiders didn't only raid Ziglag, they raided Palestine and all the surrounding regions. So 400 men went after a big band of army. That sounds a little bit like the, the, the movie 300. But in this sense, they came back. They rescued everything. And then they met up with the 200. And a few of uh, David's men said, no, we shouldn't give them what we won. And David said, no. No, we're all together. Don't, don't do that. So they shared everything that they won back with the people that stayed back, the 200. And from there, David made a law to always share. And above that, he also sent, sent the, what they recovered to the elders in, in Israel. Also, so the elders of Judah, he said, look, a blessing for you from the spoil of the enemies of God. Also to all the people, that, all the men that roamed Hebron and all the surrounding regions as well. So, like, like uh, what God sh shared earlier was, he's the same yesterday and tomorrow. So in the same sense that David shared with everybody, it's the same as in the Church of Acts that they shared with everybody. So the, the spoils that the enemy tries to steal, we gain back through Christ. And it's like Nathaniel said, it's not seeking first the other things, but it's seeking God first. So when you seek God, like David sought him, should I pursue? He said, yes, pursue, and you shall recover. So like in the Church of Acts and in the Old Testament, we should share what God has restored and what we've gained back from the enemy. And in, in the sense of the church, we have different ways of doing it, but it's not only the church. Like you saw in David, he shared to in everybody, right? So for the church, if you led by the, the Spirit, you want to share with the church, you can do that by either donating on the website, www.throneroom, or, or you can <laughs> deposit to the bank. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. <laughs> so we have a bank account. <laughs> So, so um, that's, that's also shared online. Uh, if, if, yeah. And then we also have a box at the back here. So please just feel free. Um, this is a time to share the blessings God has given one of us. There's a yoga card as well. Okay, thank you so much. <laughs> okay. Oh, you want to? 
Station. Okay. Good morning. Yeah, all right, hang on, let me just put the slide up that I need. How are we all this morning? Good. That's good. Okay, I'm going to quickly put this up. We actually have announcements today. I think for the first time in Deep History. There we go! Look, how cool is that? <laughs> look, even Nathaniel's surprised. He's like, wow, look what my wife pulled out today. <laughs> so, we want you guys to start getting a little bit involved. Okay, so there's two things up there that are happening at the moment. We are actually starting on Saturday, the Throne Room School of Music. Okay, so this is for anybody who wants to begin. Begin. Okay, it's just literally to get you used to the A, A, B, B. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm hoping you all do know your ABCs, but you know. Um, just like the entry level basic stuff. So that's 10 o'clock on Saturday here. And it is free. So it is open to anybody that you know who wants to just start an instrument. You know, so we've got guitar, bass, drums, keyboard. So if you know somebody who is interested in getting started with an instrument, you know, um, then this is where they need to be. Um, and then we have, oh, after the service, anybody whose hands are not on the wall, our lovely wall of overcomers, the wall of all our beautiful people. We will be doing that after the service. Okay, so we're going to stick some more hands up on the wall. <laughs> I love sticking hands on the wall because it just shows how it's the end of a new season, end of an old season, the beginning of a new season. And then the last one, if you would like to get involved in any of the different departments. So we must have the Sunday school. Anybody who loves kids, we are always looking for Sunday school teachers. It is, I think, the most announced thing in churches. Sunday school kids. I love them. I really, really do. So if you want to get involved in Sunday school or the media or the IT or anything like that, please come speak to me because we'd love this year to get you guys really, really involved. Amen. I will get back to you on soaking. I am not 100% sure because I know school goes back tomorrow. So we're just got to... I'll send a message on the group about soaking tonight. <laughs> awesome. They're having a conversation in the back. <laughs> if you are new here, because I see lots of new faces, please feel welcome. You know, it's, it's always wonderful just to be in the house of the Lord. I know we might seem like a bit of a crazy bunch, <laughs> but I mean, I love the freedom that God gives us just to be us, you know, just to be crazy, to be quiet, to be loud, to sing out of tune. <laughs> Don't, yay! I know me and Susanna are like, yes, that's us! That's us! <laughs> but yeah, I'm waiting on you. <laughs> oh, you must, you must know I love it. <laughs> so yeah, please feel welcome. One two, one two, there and one now. Yeah, sound, music, singing, we can try and teach you to sing. For some of you, we need some prayer. <laughs> We're more than willing to try. <laughs> we'll try. There will be. Amen. Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you that there's joy in the house of the Lord and there's freedom in the house of the Lord. There's rest in the house of the Lord, Father. And we take that on this morning. We lay our burdens, we cast our burdens at your feet, Father. And we take on your mantle this morning, which is easy and light and filled with hope and freedom and glory. So this morning we step into that, Father. We thank you for that. We pray that you will bless the word right now. Touch every heart, Father. You know the need. And Father, we speak, Holy Spirit, that you will take control and that you will minister this morning in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to some new faces. Lovely to see you guys. Welcome to the church um, and to our live streamers. I always forget to, to welcome the growing live stream uh, community. Those in Parklands, welcome there. Vicky and the, the guys there. And uh, yeah, welcome, guys. I want to, before I start, Sarah. Sarah is going to say something this morning. She does, uh, she's ready, <laughs> I think. But what we sang this morning, it was so appropriate. That was absolutely the Holy Spirit. 
For those of you guys who don't know Throne Room, let me give you some information. <laughs> some quality information, right? Sometimes people send us um, song lists and things that they like to sing. Um, and when we do, we practice and we attempt to, <laughs> to get there. But when we step in through those doors on Sunday morning, remember that we believe that this is God's house and God has complete freedom in his house. Whenever we step up here, it's like God says, remember now, I'm choosing the order of things. So whatever you hear, you're here in the morning, it's unplanned, it's spontaneous, it's Holy Spirit-led. That's why you hear so much spontaneous song coming through. It's, it's only by God's grace. Thank you, Lord. Otherwise, we would be sitting here without a plan. But our plan is to follow Jesus. That's all. That's the long and short of it. So um, that's what I'm saying. This morning's song, when we sang Fidel Dwells, Elna prophesied about the mountains coming down and breaking through and everything. And I just thought, God... You're giving us a word here that you fight the battles for us. So, Sarah, please have, uh, have your two minutes of testimony. One, two. There you go. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Yeah, so um, there's one thing that Nathaniel said to me like a while ago, that God's will is like quick and easy. Amen. And I'm a business owner myself. And you know, sometimes when you do business with people, you come into like certain situations. And I'm always like a very, I find it like a very humble and kind person. And I also want to do like business and be like just to be much just myself. But I was last week, last week in a kind of like a tricky situation. And I think sometimes people um, mistake your kindness for stupidness or for like weakness. So. And then I was meeting up with Eleanor and Nathaniel. Um, I think it was a Monday, right? Yeah. So I was talking about the situation and I was already like thinking like worst case scenarios, like I should like maybe send a, like let a lawyer send an email or you know, like I should be like more a bitch <laughs> kind of person, but I don't want to be that kind of person, you know? I just want to be myself and just so what did I do? I was thinking about the worst case situations, but I do remember it as well, like last week Sunday in, in, in church, we also talked about like God will fight our battles. So what did I do? I just let go of the process. I had like, be, be, without like fighting, I just had like more faith. I didn't force anything. And yeah, actually it turned out like we were telling, we were speaking about it like morning, morning around lunch. Monday afternoon, I got back home, and the, the situation was, like, solved for me. Without, like, forcing, without being a person that I didn't want to be, without fighting. So that's, like, very beautiful. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Sarah. Are you guys blessed by the testimony? Is that encouraging somebody this morning? It encourages me. Because sometimes, you know, we're also in business, and, and these guys are also in business. There's so many businesses, business people here. And, and you want control and you want planning and you want, to know, you want to know the timeline and you want to know your budgets and everything needs to add up. Income, expenses, everything needs to be in a positive balance moving forward. And that's not always the case. And that's the times where you've got to step back <laughs> as a business owner or even in your workplace, you may have to step back from that situation just a little bit and say, Father, now I'm giving you control. You are, we sang this morning, you are the giant slayer. You are the way maker. I'm giving you complete authority over the situation. And there's a testimony of God's goodness, how God came and he overcame and he won the battle for us. And all glory, amen, to the king. I mean, we take none of it for ourselves. We give him all the honor and all the glory for every battle that he wins. Do you know, do you know that you are victorious before you go into the fight? Amen. Is anybody who knows that? I'm talking about knowing your identity. I'm talking about when you know I'm going into a warfare situation right now but I've already overcome. That's powerful. If you can understand that, your perspective on the fight changes. Amen? You go in rest, you go in peace, you go in full authority, knowing that he goes before you and he has already won the fight for you. So I don't know what you're facing, I don't know why we're lingering on this point, but know who you are. Know that before every fight you go into, God has prepared the way. He's prepared a table in the presence of our enemies. So there's already a table in that meeting. There's already a table in that uncertainty. There's already a table prepared for your uncertainty. For you not knowing the way, God has already prepared a place for you there. When you understand that, you go in rest, you go in peace, and you start living. 
Can you say living with me? Living. You got to live again. Come on now. Oh, I like that. <laughs> I do like that. You got to live again, bro. I like living. I don't like, I don't like living in fear. I don't like living according to my bank balance. Because then nobody, <laughs> nobody's going to live then. I don't like living in fear due to viruses and possible circumstances that may happen in the year to come. I like living. Just live. Goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. Live again. Come on now. Can somebody live this morning? Throw off the old things. Say, Father, you fighting the battle. I am going to live again. Amen. 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 So this morning we're speaking about changing the atmosphere. We are changing the atmosphere. And that may be in your workplace, that may be in your business, that may be wherever you go, that your light will shine in a difficult circumstance. The scriptures we'll be using this morning is Matthew 26, verse 6, and the parallel will be in John chapter 12. Now, this morning, we're going to be talking a little bit about Mary in the Bible. Now, when I say Mary in the Bible, there's lots of, there's lots of Marys in the Bible. Which Mary is it? But we're going to talk about Mary, the sister of Martha and the, bro- the sister of, I almost said the brother of, the sister of old Lazarus. And Jesus loved this family, didn't he? He loved spending time with them. He loved being close to them. He loved being in their presence. Just like he loves being in our presence this morning, amen, he loves to dwell in the praise of his people. But the title for Mary this morning is Misunderstood. Misunderstood Mary. M.M. Have you ever been misunderstood? Have you ever been misunderstood where you said something to somebody and, and you, hear, you hear down the line from another brother or sister, did you hear what Nathaniel said about me? And the, the, the report is so incorrect of what you said or so misunderstood that's why it's always better when, you have a, when you've got a tough meeting, do it face-to-face, don't do it over WhatsApp. No, never. Over WhatsApp, <laughs> there is so much interpretation over WhatsApp. I said to, I've, I've trained my wife <laughs> to speak over WhatsApp because she said, Nathaniel, these people are thinking I'm rude to them. They think I'm attacking them. I said, I'm going to just change that word there. <laughs> just change that. Just change that little emoji. <laughs> Change that emoji to a smile emoji. <laughs> Let them understand you a little bit better. But it's better to do it face to face. You know, when you meet face to face, they can see your heart. They see it in your eyes. They will understand where you are coming from. They will understand what you are doing. Sometimes in, in our business life, we've had some tough meetings. That meetings that meant life or death. That kind of meeting. And every time I realized, I said to Eleanor, I'm going into this battle, but I know the minute I step in, that, that into that meeting and they understand who I am because of who he is. They will soften, the meeting will sort itself out and we will come out victorious. I'm telling you not a word of a lie, we've not lost a battle yet because God is with us. Amen? Face to face. Face to face when you worship the king, face to face. Amen? Misunderstood Mary. Turn with me to Luke chapter 10. Verse 30, Luke 10. I'm going to talk about this Mary. Luke has left the Bible. (laughs) Officially. 38. Okay, so let's talk about Martha and Mary, and we can relate to this so much. Amen. Verse 38, as Jesus and his disciples were on their way, they came to a village where a woman named Martha, important, hear this, Martha opened the door. That's powerful, if you can understand what I'm saying. So Martha opened the door for the king of glory to step in. Hey? But look what happens. That's powerful. She opened the door. She opened her heart for God to come in. And she had a sister called Misunderstood Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet. So let's look at the scene, all right? Martha opens the door. Let's read a little further. Okay, so Mary's sitting at the feet. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. So there was food that needed to be made. 
Jesus probably moving with an entourage of people, so there's lots of things that need to be done. And Martha was pursuing that the preparations for the people that would come. She came to Jesus and said, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do all this hard work by myself? Tell her to help me. So she opens the door. Jesus comes in. Jesus greets and he, he meets everyone. And then he goes to recline or have a seat at the, at the chair. And Mary, look at the two directions. One is going towards Jesus to come and sit at his feet and listen. And Martha is running away from Jesus, who just opened the door for Jesus, is in the kitchen, busy with many, many things. And then in the kitchen, because she's far away from the master, she gets agitated, frustrated, annoyed, overwhelmed with all this work that she's looking at. But Mary is in rest. And Mary's rest upset Martha. How dare you? How dare you? But look at Jesus' response to her. This is so important for the life we are in where it is so busy right now. Jesus says to her, Martha, Martha. He says it twice to emphasize, my dear, my dear. You are worried and upset about many things. Now, maybe there's somebody worried about many things this morning. Is there anybody here? <laughs> Let me put up both my hands. <laughs> if nobody else were to stick up their hands with me. We are in good company this morning. <laughs> worried about so many things. That must happen. I to do that all weekend. And if I don't do that, then... Da, da, da. Oh, <laughs> my mind's already started running. Stop in Jesus' name. <laughs> worried about many things. But verse 42, but few things are needed. Or indeed, just one. Come on, man. Come on, man. One thing is needed. Not many things. Not your business. Not your, your school books that need to be covered. Not your son's hair that needs to be cut this afternoon. Is the shoes ready? And I say, on the broek of us from Ora. Is he ready for school in the morning? Jesus says, one thing is needed. I am that one thing. You know, so many times, you know, on a Sunday morning in particular, there is so many things that is calling our attention, whether it be school fees, school and school fees. If you, if you, if you need to pay school fees, God's going to provide for you <laughs> in the name of Jesus. I'm speaking it over you. Why do they say school fees now? God is going to provide school fees for this year. Amen. 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 I'm speaking it prophetically. God is going to provide school fees Amen. for you. Stop worrying about school fees. That's his problem. Well, why did I say that? Sunday morning comes, and there's so many distractions, and the one thing that is needed is to come and sit at the feet of the Father. The Word says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness and all the other things will be added unto you. When you seek first the kingdom... It is amazing, do yourself a favor, it is amazing to see how the other things start to fall into place step by step as I'm moving, things are falling into place. But I must seek first the kingdom. Martha, many things you are busy with, but one thing is needed. And this is important. Misunderstood Mary has chosen what is better. She has chosen the best part. And this will not be taken away from her. It will not be taken from her. Christ will not be taken from you. Your money can get taken from you. Your car can get taken from you. Your house can get taken from you. And uh, sad as it is, even your family can get taken from you. But Christ, God, He is the one sure thing we've got. That's why we're not shaken. That's why we're not moved. Because He is our foundation. Amen? Make Christ your foundation this morning. Amen? Not many things. So, Misunderstood Mary. Read with me years of old Brahm scripture in uh, First Corinthians. Was it Second Corinthians Brahm? Second Corinthians four. Second Corinthians four. This is going to take us to the next part of Mary's story towards the end of Jesus' life. Second Corinthians chapter four, I think verse seven.
This is the one, bro. The word says, but we have this treasure. Some translations, we have this hidden treasure in jars of clay to show that all surpassing power is from God and not from us. There is something inside of you. Amen. There is something inside of you. There is glory inside of you that needs to be broken open for His glory to be revealed through you. Amen. Now that breaking, that breaking. Ah! Let me tell you something about breaking. That breaking isn't always fun. That breaking is not always nice. But sometimes it's as simple as opening up and saying, Father, this hidden treasure that is within me, I'm choosing this morning. You know why, what is so powerful? Let me tell you a little testimony about myself in church. When I was a young man on the rugby field, right, I was a, I was a all right rugby player in my day. <laughs> I'm still a young man. See, I'm wearing shorts. So anybody who's, who's stumbling over my short pants this morning and my techies, please forgive me. I'm still a young man. <laughs> Amen. So, uh, what was I saying? In my rugby days, I'm talking about opening up. Opening up. When I was in my younger days and I was Mr. Macho Man on the rugby field, I would come to church, right? And I would stand there in the back of the church. And the worship was going on. And, you know powerful worship, time of worship, and I'm standing there, and I'm just, you know, getting my seat right in the corner where nobody can sort of see me. I don't really want to be here right now. My dad said, I've got to come, so I'm here, and, you know, so I'm here right now. And there came a time where God started to prompt me and pull my, my heart, and He said to me, Nathaniel, I want more of you. I want you to come closer to your calling. There is something inside of you that needs to be revealed. That's for you this morning. There's something inside of you that God needs to be revealed. And I was standing in the worship point, I'll never forget this. And everybody was standing, we were singing that song, a uh, powerful song, waiting here for you, yeah. with our hands lifted high in praise. And I'm standing there. <laughs> Everyone's hands up in the air. And it's like the Holy Spirit said to me, my friend, you, gotta, you better lift your hands this morning. <laughs> you better lift those hands up. And the minute I put my hands up in, in worship to God, it is as though I was filled with the Spirit. In an instant, I opened up the hidden treasure that I kept so close to my heart. And I said, Father, I surrender now. Everything that I think I am, I give it back to you. And from that day, my life was never the same again. You got to release you got to say, Father, I open my heart. Sometimes it's necessary for you to go through a breaking, but sometimes it's as simple as saying, Father, I let go and give you control. Amen. Turn with me to Matthew 26. Let's look at the last part of the story. Matthew 26, verse 6. Maybe some of you guys have heard about the story of the alabaster box. The alabaster box. So burn it in your heart. There's something inside of you that God has placed there. So we see the story of Mary in the first chapter, what we just read, where Mary came to sit at the feet of Jesus. Amen. And Jesus said to Martha, Mary has received something that will not be taken from her. Something was placed inside of Mary's heart when she sat at the feet of Jesus. Amen. So now, towards the end of Jesus' ministry, Jesus comes back to Bethany where Mary is. While Jesus was in Bethany in the home of Simon the leper, a woman named Mary came to him with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume. It was valuable. It was expensive. It cost something. She had a choice to open it up or not to open it up. But the word says that she came to him bringing this alabaster jar of expensive perfume. Can I stop there for a second? 
I want to play you guys a little song that blessed me many years ago when I heard it the first time. Have a seat, close your eyes. Let the Holy Spirit minister to you before we continue in our story. Is all I have And all, all I have to give And I give it all to you It's my fragrant oil It's my costly perfume I take my alabaster box and I Let the fragrance arise La 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 Let the fragrance arise La 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 So take Father, we thank you. We thank you. Hmm. 
So I don't know what your alabaster box is this morning. I don't know what that means to you. But God is asking you to, I believe this morning, to break open that which you hold so dear, that which you've clung to. Sometimes that's our pain, isn't it? Is our pain is what we cling to for so long. And God is saying this morning, you know, sometimes we go through certain things in our lives. Mary, let me read the rest of the story and I'll tell you, I'll explain to you what I'm saying. So she poured out this oil, this expensive oil over Christ Jesus while he was reclining at the table. When the disciples, which is the obstacle in this, in this instance, saw this, they were indignant, they were upset, they were angry, and said, why this waste? Let me tell you something, your worship is never a waste. Amen? Every time you sing a song, it doesn't matter what it sounds like to anybody else, it's between you and God, it is never a waste. Why this waste? This perfume could have been sold at a high price, some, some in, in the other gospel it says, for a year's worth of wages. Can you imagine a year's worth of wages? And this woman comes and she pours it out over him. It's been sold at a high price and given to the poor because that was what Jesus had done in the past. Jesus was all about the poor, healing the sick and healing the poor. And the, 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 the religious spirit of the disciples said, why didn't she sell that and give it to the poor? But this was an act of worship. Aware of this, Jesus says to them, Why are you bothering this woman? She has done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will have with you always, but you will not always have me. When she poured perfume on my body, she did this to prepare me for my burial. Because Jesus was about to go somewhere. Truly I tell you, wherever this gospel is preached throughout the world, throughout the world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. The word, the word says, throughout the world, wherever the gospel is preached, it will tell a story of a woman who worshipped me in spirit and in truth. Come on now. Come on now. I'm talking to you about worship this morning. I'm talking about your brokenness, stuff that you have to go through. See, we go through certain things, and Mary had to break through certain obstacles in this thing. She had to go through her own personal fears of what will they say of me, these mighty men. She had to break through the opinions of men in order to get to the destination where the action needed to take place. And we had a powerful conversation this week about what does people's opinion really matter? But we esteem them so highly. i tell you a story about when I was... Uh, coaching rugby, this is after I played rugby, when I was coaching rugby at the local high schools for a few years, it always amazed me at the parents who had never played rugby in their lives, <laughs> what they were telling me from the sideline. <laughs> I thought myself, I have never played rugby in my life. What does his opinion mean? Nothing. But we take it so personally. But Mary broke through the opinions of these highly qualified disciples. And then she worshipped at the feet of Jesus. As she broke this jar open. Now the point I want to make this morning is, I don't know what your brokenness has done to you, where it has brought you, but can I tell you something this morning? Is your brokenness has brought you to this place. Your brokenness has brought you right here. And this is a table prepared just for you. I'll never forget, I tell a story all the time, before we went through our brokenness phase, where the Lord really um, took us through a journey by His grace, and if it wasn't for Him, we wouldn't be standing here this morning. But I went to Zimbabwe many years ago, and Vicky, if you're watching, your grandfather, Cleopas, I sat with him around the table with my brother, Brom. We sat around the table, and I looked at this mighty apostle, and I said to him, give me some tips, man. <laughs> tell me 
how did you survive in the ministry for so long with all the things people dish up at you? And he looked at me deep in my eyes and he said, Son, always remember this. The Lord uses broken vessels. The Lord is using broken See, backstory, before that, we were always singing the song, take everything away, Father, till all I need is you. I want to be a broken vessel for you. I want to live for you. I want to breathe for you. And then this man says to me, my son, God has deposited something in your life, but in order for that to come forth, there needs to be brokenness. In order for the glory to be revealed, there needs to be brokenness. You can't stand in your own strength. You can't stand in your own authority, in your own arrogance. There needs to be humility. You need to know that without me, there is no other way. And Father, you know what you've done to us. <laughs> oh, but I tell you, I would do it all over again. We went through the fire. We went through the flood. We went through the storm. We went through stripping away of everything you can imagine. From our daughter, it was that, that was taken from us and is now in heaven to the house we were living in, to our company nearly folding. And then you look at God and say, did you say you use broken vessels? Shut, we are shattered right now. But Mary came and she took this valuable oil and she said, Jesus, you mean more to me than the oil. You mean more to me than the wages. You mean more to me than the money. This day, where everyone else is sitting around you, fixing their eyes on the meal that is about to come, I'm turning my eyes right at you, and I'm coming for you with everything I've got. And I'm going to take this oil that I've got, and I don't care what they say right now. I don't care what they think of me right now. But I'm going to break it, and I'm going to pour it out over you with everything that is within me. I'm going to pour out my worship over you, Father. That's why we can never be the same again. We can never be the same again. We've tasted too much. We've seen too much. And God has been too good to me to stand before you and, and sing pretty little songs. I'm coming to pour out my worship before the King. And I pray that you will come to that place where you will come and pour out your worship. And say, Father, I am broken right now. I am broken. If you read the, the version of John, John says the fragrance filled the room. The fragrance was filled with the stench of religion. But this woman came and she poured out that oil over Jesus and said, Father, I'm coming to worship you now in spirit and in truth. And let that fragrance fill the atmosphere. I'm coming to change the atmosphere, Father. Now, if you don't know this, we are living in a world right now that requires an atmosphere shift. The stench of death fills the atmosphere. And God is saying, the hour has come and now is where true worshipers will worship me in spirit and in truth. Amen. Father, we thank you this morning for everything we've been through, every challenge we've faced, every trial, every giant, every mountain. We thank you for that this morning. Because it has brought us, Father, to this place. It has brought us into a relationship with the King. And Father, I pray that the fire that, that has been burning, Father, I pray that you will stir up that flame. That the worship will become a vibrant, dynamic worship that will not be held back by the confines of people's opinion. But that you will draw worshipers that will worship you relentlessly and ruthlessly. For your namesake, Father. For this is the season that you've placed us in. For such a time as this I have called you, says the Lord, to pour out your worship for me. So, Father, we thank you this morning. We pray for your blessing over this week. Your blessing over the days to come. And we exalt your name. We exalt your name. And Jesus, we say this morning, we love you, we love you, we love you. Let's sing with me. So I'm coming back to the heart of worship.
It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the things I've made it. When it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. Where it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the things I've made. It. When it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. Father, we place you right back on your rightful place in our lives. At the center of it all. King of kings and Lord of lords. We thank you for this day and we, we burn this word in our hearts, Father. We burn the word of break open your worship for me. It will not be wasted. Not one drop. So, Father, we're coming to worship you in spirit and in truth in this day. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, guys. Be blessed. If you want to put your hands on the wall. You are more than welcome to. If you don't want to, that's fine too. It just represents overcomers. And if you want to be involved, come and talk to us. If you're online and you want to get involved in any shape or form, please let us know. We've got so much stuff to do. Um, and uh, just be a blessing to the kingdom this morning. Amen. Thank you. Bless you. And thank you for, for coming. We're blessed to have you with us. Amen. Amen. Amen.